The inventory list will show all parts available to use in the system. Parts are organized into physical warehouses. Within each warehouse, the parts are further organized into categories. To view a list of warehouses, you can click on the button to the left of the inventory heading. It looks like two folders. A list of warehouses will appear. You can click on the down arrow by each warehouse to view the categories within. If you want to add a warehouse or edit an existing one, you can do so by clicking the gear on the very top right hand side and click warehouses. If I want to add a new warehouse, you can click the blue new button on the top right. It'll ask you for the name, the tax rate, and additional information. If you want to edit an existing warehouse, simply click the name of the warehouse to get to the edit screen. You can make any changes you wish and click the save button when you're done. To filter by a specific warehouse, you can click a warehouse name on the left hand side. This way you'll only see parts that belong to that warehouse. We also have a drop down filter on the top where it says warehouse one right now. You can actually click on that in blue and then we can switch it back to all warehouses or we can pick a different one that we choose. Right now I have it set to all. If I click on all in blue, I have the option of choosing stock or non-stock. So if I click on non-stock, I have one part in here right now. This means that this particular part, the quantity is not being tracked. On the rest of my parts, I have a quantity number. So these are considered stock parts. To add a new part to the system, you can click on the blue new button on the top right. You can click on the plus sign on the left hand side menu for inventory. Or you can click the blue plus on the very top for the new record button and choose inventory. For now we'll go ahead and click on the blue new button. On this screen we can fill out all the information about our new part. For part number we can go ahead and type in anything we'd like. So I've got a name here and a part number, description I'll leave out. Category, if you have categories already added to your other parts, they will show up here in the drop down as options. If you do not have a category in the drop down, you can simply type a new one in. So I'll actually just type one and I'll call it new category. Click the blue line underneath that says add and that'll add the value. We can choose which warehouse we want to put the part in. I'll row and bin. That's more for if you have a physical place inside of the warehouse that you keep the part. So that way you can easily find it. You can type that here. We can type in a unit cost. And most of the time it'll be each unless you're working with fluid. So in this case you can do gallon or quart. We have a checkbox here for track inventory. If I leave this unchecked, every time I add the part to a work order, it'll still use my $10 unit cost, but it won't subtract any quantity level. Uh, it basically won't, won't keep track of any quantity, so it'll just assume that you can use the part whenever you wish. If you want to track quantity, you would check the button here for track inventory. It'll tell the system how much of the part you have in stock currently. So let's say 50 here. Reorder point, if the quantity falls below a certain level, the system will tell you that you need to reorder that part. The reorder point is the value for that. So for example, if I put 10 here, if the quantity for this part goes below 10, then the system knows that I need to reorder more of this part. Reorder quantity means that if I go and reorder more, uh, how much in a batch do I get? So if I put five here, 
that means that when I order the part again, I usually order five at a time. You have the option to enter a vendor, who you buy the part from, primarily, a manufacturer of the part, a separate vendor part number if that's applicable, and you can also enter a UPC or, or barcode value here. This is useful if you have a work order and you're using our app. There's a button on the work order underneath the task that says scan part. You can click on that or tap that and then it'll use the phone's camera and you can scan the UPC code and it'll pull up the part number for you. And that's to save time so you don't have to go searching for the part number. If you have multiple vendors, you can use the add vendor button here. We also have a way to add substitutes. So if I click on this, you can say a substitute part if this one is out of stock. So if the quantity is zero, I can choose a different part number in the system to take its place. And like other parts of the program, we have a place for custom fields. This is if you want a text box that doesn't necessarily fit the ones that we have provided for you uh, to type in more information. Now that we have pretty much everything that we want, uh, we can click on save on the bottom. If you plan on adding a, a number of parts at the same time, you can click on save and new. It'll keep this screen up so that way you can start re-entering uh, data for the next part. But for now, we'll go ahead and click on save. So now our part is in the list. Notice that I gave it a new category. So if we, on the left-hand side, look at our warehouse number one, I can see new category here. I can click on that category and it'll show me only parts in that warehouse and category. I can also use the search box at the top to search for the part number, or I can search for the category as well. If I want to make a change to a part, let's say I typed in the part number wrong or wanted to change the name, from this list, simply click the part name. You'll get to the part information screen. On the top right, you can click the blue edit button, and this will take you to the edit screen so you can make any changes. On each part row, there is an action gear on the right hand side. If we click the action gear, we have a few options. Receipt means that I want to add quantity to this part. Issuance means I want to subtract quantity from this part. Purchase order means that a purchase order record will be created for this part. A purchase order is used to track when you order the part from a vendor. You can keep the purchase order open and then you can close or receive the purchase order whenever the parts are in. Transfer is used if I want to transfer quantity of the same part, part number between warehouses. So if I had this part in warehouse number one and two, two physical different warehouse locations, I can transfer the quantity from one to the other if I wish. Let's go ahead and click on receipt. On the receipt screen, I'll have a date at the top that you can fill in, and this is the day that you're receiving the part into the system. We can add how much of the part was received. We can add the price. The tax information is already provided from the warehouse. If you have an invoice number that goes along with this receipt, you can certainly type that in. Enter which vendor you purchased the part from, and then you can add a description of why you're adding this receipt. So you can say you um, purchased more parts. Click on save. Now our test part has a lot more quantity. If we click on the test part that I added, go to the receipts tab, you can see the initial stock and that came over from when we initially added the part to the system. And then we have another one with the description that I purchased more parts. It shows how much I received and at what, pr what price. Likewise, we can demonstrate doing an issuance. I can say if this applies to a piece of equipment or not. 
this is optional. If you're just lowering the quantity without wanting to attach it to equipment, you can do so by leaving the equipment box empty. For quantity, I can say how much I want to subtract. You can also put in the date, it'll default to today's date, and a description of why you are lowering the quantity. If I click on save, my issuance will be recorded, my quantity number will be updated. If I click on the part, go to receipts, notice that out of my initial stock, I have 25 left because I just issued 25. Under issuances, I can see that I used 25 and I subtracted that from my quantity. As you use the part on work orders, this issuances tab will also let you know whenever a part has been used along with the unit ID and work order number. We also have an attachments tab on this part information screen. If you want to add a picture of the part or any documentation, you can do so here. One more thing to go over while we're on this receipts tab. If I'm going into a work order and placing, or I'm sorry, adding this part to a work order ticket, notice that I have 25 remaining at $10 and then I have 60 remaining at $15. What will happen is the system will use uh, first in, first out by default. So as I use up the 25, all the $10 parts will be used first. Once those are all gone, then the system will go in and use the $15 parts. If you want to change the, uh, the way that works, if you want it to be last in, first out, instead of first in, first out, we can go over that. On the top right, if you click the gear, go to Organization Profile. If you scroll down, you'll have this section here called Inventory Accounting. So you can change this for first in, first out, or last in, first out. And that'll change how that works when the quantity is pulled. We also have an option here for default inventory tracking. So that's if I add a new part to the system, do I want that tracking checkbox automatically checked for me? If so, you want to set this to yes. Allow overdrafts, this is set to no by default. If it's set to no and the quantity reaches zero, the system will no longer let you add the part to a work order ticket until more quantity is received. If you want to go into the negative, uh, even though you have no quantity left, you still want to post the part to a work order, you can set this to yes. Thanks for watching. You can find more video tutorials on our YouTube channel, or for more information about our software products, you can visit our website at mtcpro.com.